Welcome to the IPA Champions Cup, live on Sporty Stuff TV. Well, a very, very good evening and welcome to day five of Champions Cup, Sporty Stuff TV. Group E this evening, absolutely fantastic matches this evening. And last night was, well, I think we was up till about four o'clock in the morning, it seemed like. But what a night it was. So, so close to matches. I've got with me my old pal here, Mark Pickworth. Mark? You're a pool expert. What was it like last night to sit through that? Well, I've only sort of just got over it, to be honest. And, and what the players must have gone through is, is incredible. The drama that, that every match created was superb. And right to the very last match, there were still three players that could have won that group. If we get another group like that tonight, I'm not sure how I'm going to put up with it. My ticker's only just got over last night. Well, the milkman really beat me home last night, funnily enough. When I got home, the milkman was just delivering the milk, so that's how late we got home last night. But tonight, again, we've got some great, well, fantastic names tonight, some big names as well, Mark. We have, yeah. I mean, first of all, I mean, we sort of said last night with these four players that John McAllister is going to be pretty much the bookie's favourite to see who's going to win this group. But he's got some tough competition. He's right. odds on. He's odds on, you know. To yeah, win. he is odds on. Um, but we've got Dean Shields. We've got also Matthew Coates, who's the qualifier. And then we've got Connor Treacy. And he's going to take some beating. Really? Yeah, he is, yeah. I think so. I, it's, think we, we, I mean, we've, we've lost so many favourites over these past, week, past days. Oh, is, oh, is it going to be one of them tournaments where the favourites don't get through? We've only had sort of one favourite go through. No offence to any of the other qualifiers. Liam Dunst is the only favourite out of the four that's got through so well, far. It's day, five. it's day five today, isn't it? And, you know, what we've had is just unbelievable. And here we go, here's our, here's our players. And this is where we've got that Group E winner, that spot on the third one along. Tonight, we're going to have a picture in here tonight, aren't we? Who's it going to be? Well, we've just mentioned the four players, but let's talk about the players that have got there already. Liam Dunster, he was phenomenal. He was faultless. We've got Corey Reese. That group is really staging up really nicely. And whoever gets through tonight, they've got a tough group already. Whoever gets through. And then we've got on the end at the moment, Jake Dylan Newlove. He nearly left the competition last night because three players could have knocked him out of that spot. Because remember, it is the best runners up that get the final two spots. Currently, Andy Crowsdale's the best runner up, and then Jake Dylan Newlove's the second best runner up on four points and plus three. So his space, this, you know, that space could easily be taken. But then the next couple of days for Jake, he's really got a. I should imagine his knees would be very, very sore, weren't he? He'd be, he'd be on the prayer mat, weren't he, tonight, hoping that he still gets through. But he could go either way again tonight, isn't it? But whoever wins tonight, he's going to go in that top half there, isn't he? And that number three, very, very close. It's going to be a tough one, definitely. But who is going to get into that space? Is it going to be John McAllister, the world champion? Is it going to be Dean Shields, shootout? He's already been a world champion in the doubles with Gareth Hibbert, the godfather. Then we've got Conor Treacy. He's not had the greatest of seasons, but he's got a terrific record, right? and he is definitely one to watch. And then we've got Matthew Coates. He's a qualifier from Nottingham. He's currently 15th on the amateur rankings, and he could be one to watch. As an outsider, and I know you're going to mention a lot on the odds, but I remember what his odds are as an 8-1. to one to win the group tonight. And remember, we've already had an 8-1 to one win a group with Jamie Clark. Absolutely. And, Ma and Matthew Coates as well, as he slipped through the net, because he was a massive price this morning. But as we said before, Johnny Mack, 10-11. to 11. Any, any people viewing from home on, 10-11 to 11 means you have to have £11 on and you win 10. So you don't even get even money for your money if Johnny Mack wins. Then you've got Dean Shields, 13-8. And don't forget, Dean Shields is 12 to 1 to be event one winner. Johnny Max only 7 to 2. Connor Treacy is 6 to 1 to win the group this evening and 50 to 1 to win event one winner. And as you said, Matthew Coates, who not a lot of people knows, know about Matthew Coates. You know, you're a professional ball player. But the people back home, and I think he slipped through the net today because Matthew Coates is 8 to 1 to win and also he's 50 to 1 to win to win the event, Group 1 event, which is a massive, massive price, 50 to 1. So, you know, if you want to sling away a couple of pounds, 
you can win £100 for £2. And, you know, as you said, so far, Champions Cup, sporty stuff, it's been at one, one night we had the favourites, the first night. The very Since first then, night. It's been absolutely outside us, outside us, shock, shock, shock results, isn't it? You know, I, I've got a funny, but you think tonight could be close. I think Johnny Mack's going to absolutely, I think he could be another, uh, Liam of day one. I think Johnny Mack could go bing, bing, bing tonight. Three wins, six points, good night all, early night finish. Well, we know there's a lot of matches to be played, isn't there? And it, to be honest with you, I can't really wait for match one to get one up. But let's have a look what match one is. Yeah, this is Connor Treacy. He's uh, three to one Connor Treacy to win this match. And Dean Shields is odds on four to six. And it's nine to four to tie. Don't forget, again, four to six. You know what that means. You have to have six pound on and you win four. I'm trying to learn you this book, mate. I'm picking it up. Don't I worry. We've got, we've, got 20, I mean, we've got 28 shows. So at the end of it, you'll be following me around the betting shops every day looking for the value. And there is plenty of value there, I can assure you. So I sort of said about Connor Tracy, he's not been in the best form recently, and as you can see, he's lost his last six matches. How much is that going to play in his mind and in this competition? In the 2021 win percentage ratio, 36%. That is very low. That's probably the lowest I've seen so far to date. But he has got a career win ratio of 59%. So... We know he's got it in him, but can he produce it tonight in that studio setting? We saw he got to the group final last time, and Dean Shields, he's going to have his work cut out. Remember, it's a, only a race to four, but it could be anybody's. But there's Dean Shields, a world champion. Remember, he's got that world champions already in his pocket. 2021 win ratio percentage of 59%, and then a career win ratio of 61%. And the win losses there, that's not a bad record. One six, lost four, and he's ranking 15th. I think Dean Shields has got the potential, without a shadow of a doubt, he can be in the top eight next season and maybe the top five. Top five? He's got that much potential. Mm, lovely. Then we've got John McAllister. Don't forget Johnny Mack, as he's known in the game. You call him the Rolls Royce of Paul, don't you? It is cue action. If anybody's trying to learn the game, etc., etc. He's the one to watch. He's called the machine, and he's called the machine for, the, for a reason. I mean, look at that 2021 win ratio, 69%. That is some record, and a career win percentage of 67% over five years. He's been in eight finals, and he's only won three of them, which is unbelievable. But remember, he's won the big one, the one that everybody wants to the have. World. The world championships. He's had that title since 2020. He's going to have to give it up in 2022 because our world championships is going ahead. But what a, what a match. The machine. In Dart's world, we've got James Wade is our the machine. So uh, you call him the Rolls Royce of Paul, don't you? So yeah, looking forward to see Johnny Mack tonight. But this is our outsider. He's going to have a tough match first. He's got John. Kamikaze. You love that name, don't you? Yeah, I used to be a pilot. <laughs> but again, look at the win ratio for Matthew Coates. You say he's unknown, but look at that, 64%. Yes, he's a qualifier. He plays on the amateur ranks. He's ranked number 15 in the amateur rankings. He's going to be a professional this, se this up-and-coming season. And that career win ratio of 62%, that's over three years. Yeah, I know he's not made any finals at all on the IPA ranks, but he's got potential. And an 8-1 to one shot, we saw Jamie Clark do it. Can Matthew Coates do it? He was a it? little bit bigger than 8-1 to one early this morning as well, if you looked. I see double figures, Matthew Coates, and even in some of his matches, he was double figures to win early on this morning. But that price absolutely has disappeared. And, you know, when I looked at 5 o'clock, I couldn't, have, you know, I couldn't even see any prices at all for so really all the all the shrewd nuts as I say in the pool game like yourself you know shrewd nut you know all the ins and outs of these players you know you know what they have for breakfast and everything I know you I've watched you in the hotel wow. when you're queuing up with your cornflakes don't start rumours off Gary, Matthew Coates say. you know he's been a massive massive price mark but uh, could he land the shock of all shocks and I'll tell you what if he wins there'll be a lot of bookies they will be running to the bank tomorrow. But have the bookies got it right or have they got it wrong? You don't often find a bookie boy on a bike, do you? And I think tonight, I still think the bookies have got it right. Matthew Coates, in my eyes, is still the outsider of the four. Yeah. Got the prices coming. As we said here, Connor Treacy, first match, three to one. After what you're telling me about Dean Shields is in a bit of form and Connor Treacy's lost his last 
few matches, isn't six he? matches he's lost. Yeah, there. maybe the four to six looks a good bet here, Dean Shields. I'm not putting up any prices tonight on Matthew Coates matches because the prices are not available. They was available early this morning. The prices have disappeared, so we're not putting them on the screen. We're only going to put prices up, Sporty Stuff TV, if the prices are there and people can get on. If they can't get on, we won't put them on the screen. Then we've got Johnny Mack here, four to seven to beat Connor Treacy. That looks to me a real, real good bet at four to seven. But it all depends how Connor plays in the first match. If Connor plays really, you know, gets beat easy in the first match, then that price of Johnny Mack will will shorten. But if Connor Treacy plays well in the first match, you won't get seven to two Connor Treacy. It'll be a five to two chance. It's all about form. Watching it, isn't it, Mark? How the boys playing their first match, their second match, and then the last match of the evening. I know you're looking forward for this one. Dean Shields against Johnny Mack. You don't think there'll be nothing in this one, do you? I don't, and I'm going to put it straight out there right away. I think there's going to be two players that will finish on five points tonight, and it's going to go down to that last match, and I think that could possibly be the draw, and, and who decides who goes into You're the off game. again, day five, and you want another tie anyway. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go over to our ref, the one and only Ben Taylor Fuente. Champions Cup, Group E, match one. Best of six frames. First frame, Connor Treacy to break. Time running. Good evening, everyone from the arena. This is our first match of Group 5 of the Sporty Stuff TV Champions Cup. Connor Tracy up against Dean Shields. I have been joined in the commentary box by Dan Davey. Good evening, Dan. Good evening, Dan. Hell of a break <laughs> from Connor Tracy there. Really got into those. Actually made there three, three balls. He's made, a, he's made a couple of reds and a yellow. And he's straight into the yellows. Very nice split. Hit them really well. It's it's a perfect start, isn't it, really? You couldn't ask for a better opportunity first off. No, no. Uh, and, and, you know, that first frame, I think the first and the last frames are always the hardest ones to win. Uh, you just want to get your first frame on the board, get settled uh, into the game. Ten and, seconds. And um, good chance. Good chance for Connor. Great chance for Connor early on. We've had obviously a little bit of spiel from our two experts in the studio. How do you see tonight going? Uh, you can't look past John McAllister's favour, obviously. Um, I mean, he's a serial winner uh, on the IPA. He's won, you know, uh, multiple events, but he's the current world champion, and uh, for good reason. You know, he really he's one of the most dedicated players in the game. Uh, often at tour weekends, you go down at sort of seven, half seven, sometimes in the morning. To if you've got an early game, uh, say we're playing at nine in the morning, you, you kind of don't want to wake up or you know blurry eyed. Go downstairs. Oh, you you want to get down there, have a good half an hour, get your eye in. Especially someone like me, I wear contact lenses. You want to get your eye in, um, then go and have a bit of breakfast, and then come back ready for your match so you feel fully awake. Well, you know, if John McAllister's playing at midday, um, he'll still be down there at half seven in the morning, having his hour. Um, very, very, very dedicated. And I know as well, he um, he puts an awful lot of practice in, in the lead up to these big events as well. So, gets what he deserves. Frame. Well, he gets what he deserves. Will he get what he deserves tonight? We'll find out later on tonight. First up, Connor Tracy is one nil for the good. Fantastic break of finish to start us off. He's a he's a bit of an outsider, isn't he, Connor tonight, Dan? He's he's certainly an outsider with the bookies. I think he's an outsider with everyone, really. I think most people will be looking at Dean and John as as if that's the big battle. But we've had a lot of shocks this year so far in the Champions Cup, and well, could Connor join those ranks? Yeah, he could, and, and he and he wouldn't be a a. a, a rank outside of two. Um, Dean Shields to break. You know, he's, he's on merit. Trailing one frame. Uh, I think that John, John's Time clearly running. the favourite. Dean is, is definitely second favourite for this group. But Connor and Matthew Coates are two very, very good players. Connor's a first-year pro. 
um, currently ranked 37 in the pro ranks, and Matt Coates is up in the top 16 of the amateur rankings, which is no mean feat because there's sort of 200 players on the amateur rank. So um, it, th there's, there's no weak link in this group tonight, and uh, with the format being so brutal, uh, a best of six, then nothing really is going to be a shock um, in terms of one-off matches. But, yeah, look, obviously, John's favourite is world champion. Uh, Dean's a fantastic player. Um, Ten seconds. You know, he's currently ranked in the top 16 of the pro ranks. He is number 16. A uh, bit of an underachiever for me, probably, Dean. Um, you know, a, a very, very good player. Maybe, maybe just needs that first kind of big win. Um, get the monkey off his back, if you know what I mean. But, um, yeah. Yeah, good he's group. had the... I mean, he was a doubles world champion, wasn't he? But he, he's, he's certainly made a major final on the IPA. But I don't think... Yeah, he's never been into the winner's enclosure. <laughs> wow, no, how's that yellow um, dropped? That was very close. <laughs> yeah, I think I think any any harder and it wouldn't have gone in. But um, yeah, he's just caught that a little bit thick and hence actually kind cool. of run out of position a little bit here because he wanted to be uh, a foot or so higher up the table um, to, to play the yellow into this right middle. Um, he's only got the thinner snick of the two by the looks of it. It wasn't quite as good a break as Connors, was it? But although initially it looked like a half decent table because there were no real clusters of balls available, he only really had the yellows to go at, and um, that black's awkward. Even if he does manage to take the rest of them, the black is going to be awkward. Yeah. So the the his way out will be the yellow nearest to the right middle. Um, he needs to get sort of centre of the table so he can play that yellow into the right middle and just probably play it with a fair touch of right hand side uh, to swing it just by the red that's just below it and he'll take the black into the bottom left corner pocket but doesn't want to be straight here which I think he might be it looks pretty straight to me so yeah, what will he do here screw it back a bit of reverse side He'll know better because he's right behind the shot, so it looks like that he's got much, not much choice but to do that. Uh, ideally, he'd have been closer to the top cushion, so he could have just come naturally off the left-hand side cushion, but he's played that perfect. It's a great shot. So a little bit of right-hand side, just to grip the cushion um, after he plays the yellow into the right middle, and that should see him just come just below that red uh, for an easy black into the left corner pocket. Oh, unless, of course, the well, black goes <laughs> down to the t bottom right. It really doesn't look like it does from here, but it must no, do. No, and you can... Yeah, and it's a little bit surprising, but you can see from the way he's got down to it that he obviously hasn't got a full pocket or feels like he's got a full pocket, but... Frame. Yeah, played it well. Well, he certainly had enough of the pocket, and Dean Shields replies immediately to Connor Tracy's break dish with one of his own. One apiece. He's a... Uh, well, it's just a good start from both players. What more can you say? It's essentially now a best of four. Yeah, great start. Great clearance each. Dean looks pretty determined in that chair. He's got a, a steamy look in his eye, but... Connor can keep him away from the table with this break. Frame three. It won't matter how much steel is in there. The break. Scores are tied. Oh, almost frame. angry. Really determined. Time running. One of the nicest guys you'll meet, Dean Shields. As is Connor. Like a very good break. The cue ball heading towards oh, the right no. middle pocket, though. That's harsh. Yeah, that's, that is brutal. One free shot. One visit. I mean, so I, I, I guess the counter-argument to whether that's lucky or unlucky, Dan, is when you're hitting anything at that pace, you are always trusting to luck. Um, you see some players put a bit more control into the break, try to control the cue ball a bit better. I'm not sure that's Connor's style. No, no. And um, I think there's a few schools of Extension thought. Extension called. Um, I know Ben Davis, uh, two-time world champion Ben Davis, is kind of at the point in his career now where he's, I asked him, and he just seems to nonchalantly get down and give them a whack. 
and um, with no control. But yeah, he's actually got a fantastic break, and his school of thought, what he told me was that, you know, he, he's got the hump with, I'm just going to get down and hit him. I can hit them great, and another ball comes along and knocks it in off. I'm sick of it. I'm just going to hit them very hard and hope for the best kind of thing. And actually, it's got a brilliant break, really effective break. But when you watch him, he just seems to just get down and hit it within half a second. Back. Well, he, but, you with, know, with, he's to the right. Sorry, with Ben Davis, he doesn't even get down, does he? He just sort of no, stands no. up. Almost stands um, up, yeah. Yeah, you'll see that very soon on our screens. Ben Davis be one of the one of the favourites uh, for this tournament. Yeah, it'll certainly be one of the favourites in, in I two. believe event two. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we do have so many more wonderful pool players still to come for you. You've only seen if this is your first taste of IPA pool of Blackpool pool. Well, you haven't seen half of it yet. There are some astonishingly good players still to come. Yeah, the strength and depth is um, is has, has shot up in the last two three years as the, as the sport seems to have grown in popularity. So players like Dean Shields, as good as he is, ten seconds um, hasn't hasn't won a major tournament yet. Which um, as as an individual, you know, doubles world champion with Gareth Hibbert, the defending champion for this tournament. But it um, just goes to show the strength and depth when somebody as good as Dean um, hasn't, hasn't won an event. Yeah. In fairness, certainly in recent times, that's because of the sort of duopoly that Mark Farnsworth and Liam Dunster seem to have created. Don't get me wrong, there's been a few other event winners in there, but they've taken the lion's Ten share seconds. of recent events. Yeah, yeah, I mean, almost boringly consistent excellence from those two um, have been yeah, unbelievable the last couple of years really seem to have almost taken each other to another level but uh, you see here Dean Shields continues this perfect start frame three frames three first visit finishes Connor Tracy just uh, off the back of an unfortunate kicking off into the middle pocket but what a start from Dean Shields <laughs> it's an easy game this one if you if you know how to play it. Dean's actually made that finish look a little bit easier than it was. That's a tricky finish he took out in that race. Yeah, one was... of those. I mean, I, I, th I think when he's at his best, you, you expect him to get them, but they, it wasn't an easy finish. It wasn't really difficult, but he's made a tricky finish look easy. Yeah, couple it was just a couple positional of shots. A couple of toughish positional shots going on there. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, uh, the, the under-hitting and over-hitting shots is quite often one. where Time running. your players might get caught out early doors in a match, a little bit of uh, little bit of nerves, not quite used to the pace of the table, um, but settled down really well. There's the shootout, Dean Shields, second break of the match. And it's his second good break of the match. He's made a ball. But he's not getting the, the explosion of the pack that Connor is. Is he? Is he perhaps not just putting quite as much power into it? Well, it's a million dollar question, really. It's not always about power. Um, timing is, is a huge part of it as well. Ten so seconds. it's a combination of the two. Um, we're, we're always forever searching for that perfect that perfect combination, uh, that perfect mix of power versus timing and not trying to making sure you making sure you hit dead flush on that front ball just to transfer as much of that force as possible through the pack. But um either way, I mean he's not gonna care. He's made a ball and he's in. He is Ten seconds. there is work to do. And that's one part of the job done. That's a lovely shot to manoeuvre that red out into a possible position. He's still got the red just below the black. That's presumably his next problem area, Dan. Yeah, very good. I mean, he's gone into his bad area as early as possible, which is what you're always taught to do for when you start trying to sort of progress at the game and get better. 
first thing I was taught as a kid was that if you've got problem balls, go into them as soon as, as early as you possibly can so that when you do go into it, you're more likely to have another ball that you're going to be on as well. So textbook stuff from Dean, he's executed it really well. And um, he's done most of the hard work now to get himself uh, through what you might call another tricky finish and making that look easy. But it's just under hit that one a little, I think. A little bit of a grimace, but wanted to be closer to it. I did would have wanted to be on the line there. Extension yeah, I mean, cool. it's okay this, isn't it? He can leave himself an angle on that penultimate red to, to break out the black and his last red. But he'd like to have been closer because it just gives him that bit more control. He's running away from this now. Doesn't want to be yeah, on the cushion. I mean, it's, it's... No, he doesn't want to be on the cushion, but he needs to be close to the cushion to leave himself dead straight on this one into the bottom right corner. So I think he's going to have to play this one up. Um, sort of pocket weight. Bit of a nervy yeah, one. That, I, I was under the impression that the the red in the centre of that seconds. cluster didn't go to the bottom left, but by the looks of it, it does. So, uh, Time out. He's almost played it too well, too soft. It looks it looks like he's got a. So he's asking the referee to. He's to, thrown uh, his hands up a little bit as if he's had a kick. Now. Yeah. It was a soft shot. And it did, I mean, the cue ball did absolutely stop dead, and it doesn't tend to do that unless you've had a kick. So, Time running. benefit of the doubt there, I think, for Dean Shields. I think that probably was. Can he hold the cue ball here on that yellow? Can he play this in such a way? He can just drop the red in and leave the black to the left centre still. Brilliant. Nicely done, that's a great shot. Yeah, he's, he's used the yellow there. <laughs> Hasn't it just? Frame. Four frames in and four finishes directly from the break. Three to Dean Shields, one to Connor Tracy. Dean has guaranteed himself a point early doors. And well, Connor needs to hope Dean slips up because he hasn't done anything wrong. No, oh, he's, he's broke and cleared the first frame, sat down for the second frame, uh, sat down for the fourth frame, and uh, got unluckily kicked in off the break in the third frame. So he's literally not not made a not made an, a, an error at all. Frame five. Connor Treacy the break, trailing three frames to one. Time running. How's that booming break going to go this time? Another great break from Dean Shields. Another finish where it's not going to be the most difficult finish he's ever taken out. Um, they're not absolute gimmies. He's got a problem area, which is the same whether he goes sort of reds or yellows, but reds are Reds have only really got one proper problem, which is the red just below the black. See Dean there as, again, it's pinpoint. Very nicely controlled. Oh, sorry, Connor. Sorry, Connor. very nicely controlled. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, another great break from Connor. And, and very nicely controlled. And he's, he's again, going to go straight into his bad area, so to speak. Ten seconds. Extension call. Yeah, this is really the key shot of the frame. If this red comes out nicely and the black's still available, you would expect him to finish these off. Oh, wow, where's that cue ball going? Oh, that's harsh. Touching it's harsh. It could have been harsher. It, it, it could. Um, Does he have a shot? Because this red might go. Well, from our angle, I, I think from the commentary... We may have three or four cameras on this, but we can't really see. Connor's the guy that's going to know, and obviously he couldn't. Otherwise, we would have seen him take it on the, the cut back into the bottom right corner pocket. So a containing safety for now. Wanted to leave that cue ball wedged up against the yellow so that there was no um, shot for Dean. 
What is the extension he's called? Just left him a, an opportunity to nick this one into the left middle pocket if he wants to. Yeah, and I, I, I can't actually see any reason for Dean not to go for this. If he gets this, um, and he's on a yellow next up, okay. Connor's sort of got the other yellow close to the cue ball under a bit of control because of the red in front of it. But the two yellows that are together are a makeable plant. This is an opportunity here for Dean. Well, the other thing to put bluntly is there's no easy safety on either side. It makes his decision to attack uh, a much easier one. It was a difficult shot, and he has missed it. First mistake of the match. And what's he left for Connor? A very thin snick into the right centre. Not too bad, but the cue ball's going to be running away a little bit. That's made it at a nice pace. Yeah, made it nice at a very nice control. pace. So just look here as if he just drops this in. Don't leave yourself straight. Just take that cue ball through a tiny bit. That's perfect. Just maybe would have liked to have come just a little bit further over. As long as he can get the cue ball out and avoid avoid any yellows. Not quite as easy as a positional shot as it looks. Some would be tempted to play this with rakes of top and left hand side, maybe try and take it up the right hand side of the table, or just drift up past the yellows uh, to the left of the two yellows. Rakes aside, it's just about got there. Dan. <laughs> that was very close. A wry smile on the face of Connor Tracy, but a smile right. nonetheless. He edges back into the match. It's 3-2 now to Dean Shields, but it will be Dean breaking for the win in the next frame. If not, we could start with a draw. That would, well, that would keep this group wide, wide open. But of course, really, this group sort of depends on how the world champion John McAllister plays later on tonight. Yeah, and I think John, John won't be disappointed with a draw either, he'll be absolutely loving it if there's a draw first match because um, it's, it's just just better for him really, and he'll, he'll then Six, know really the final that, frame, that Dean Shields to break, I think you know anyway three two wins to and two. a draw is definitely going to get Time through running. but if the first match is a draw you're even more likely to get through with four points um, so yeah I think from a player's point of view you want all the other matches to be a draw if you get, you know, especially first up might be a different story when we're getting into our fifth and sixth matches of the night. Time will tell. Dean flirted with that top right corner pocket off this break. Nearly screwed it straight back in off, but it rattled its way out of the jaws and has left himself a presentable opportunity on reds. It's pretty decent. Ten seconds. Extension the the red on the left-hand side is a bit awkward, but if you finish lovely on that on, as your last ball, it looks perfect for the black, as long as the black passes that yellow. It's a bit tight. Yeah, one of those. You have to forgive us sometimes if we can't quite see it is from, from uh, as you probably know, when you're out there playing, you, you see everything um, uh, an awful lot better than sometimes you do from the commentary box, especially when you've got a uh, black and the yellow close together. I mean, the black definitely goes into the left middle pocket. Does yeah. it go bottom right from this angle? We can't really see from here, but Dean will know. Now, that's, that, that's nicely controlled because if you hit that slightly harder, um, you could have found that that red was tied up and uh, tied up with those two yellows on the right hand side of the table. So it's all really about if and when. Uh, he's going to attack this red ten seconds on the left-hand side of the table. Does he try and land on it? I'm sure he will. Yeah, I think if it weren't for the yellow just below the cue ball there, <laughs> that's a nice shot. Um, that's really well controlled. But if if it weren't for the yellow that's still there in the centre of the table, then I think he'd be thinking about a double for that last red, a difficult red. 
But that certainly covers it. Tried to play on it now. How's it come out? He's not on it. He's not, but he's 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 it's a it's a very brave, bold attempt to get on it because I, I think he may have been coming to 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 get onto the left hand to the left of where this yellow is now. Um, but if it had just carried on another couple of inches, he Second also would seconds. have had the right into the bottom left corner pocket. Now what's he got? I mean, you, you can't be cutting that into the middle. Surely not. You're doubling it into the top right corner pocket. Is there a gap for the cross double into the middle? Ten seconds. Cut it into the top right corner pocket. What a shot, Dean Shields. What a shot. And from the way he's played it and the way he's getting down, this black obviously does go into the bottom right-hand corner pocket. What a finish this will be. Frame wow. and the match. Dean Shields wins four frames to two. That's impressive. Bit of class there, Mark. Dean Shields, that was good. Yeah, very good indeed. What a finish out at the end there. Connor Treacy has not done anything wrong there. Made a mistake. He hasn't, and he's been punished. He's been beaten 4-2, but already the second favourite to get through this group. Dean Shields, he's, he's had a cracking start. And Connor Treacy, got a feel for him a bit there, but he's playing some good stuff. He's dangerous in this. He could cause an upset tonight, Connor could. Mm -hmm. So he's not quite out of it yet. But if Dean continues with that form, it's going to go right down. And to he, lo he lost the first first frame, didn't he, when it went 1-0. And you think, right, but he come back second, 1-1. One, one, and then after that, he put just put his foot on that accelerator pedal, didn't he? And uh, I was impressed with him. Don't yeah. forget I'm only a novice at Paul, but I'm learning night by night. And to me, very, very good. Yeah, you've noticed. He's, he had a different gear. Different gear. That's the, that's what that's what the same you wanted. Gear, didn't you? I'll, yeah. I'll I'll teach you a few bits. Different of gear, and don't forget, I'm still waiting for the Rolls Royce to appear later on this well, evening. I ain't exactly. got long to go now, have we? About ten o'clock. Yeah, they'll be on very soon. Yeah, be good. ten o'clock. We we'll see the Rolls Royce, won't we? In action. Looking forward to that as well. Oh, and here we go. Matthew Coates, the outsider of the party, eight to one. Bit of double figures you've seen today to win the group versus Johnny Mac. Previous match there. 3-0 to Johnny Mac. That was in the World Championships, so uh, and that's when John was in top, top form. But is he in top form tonight? In this race to four, it's going to be a different sort of format to what he's used to. This is anybody's... It's so hard to predict. Everyone's going to... The, the whole of the pool community, all the betting, they're all going to go for Johnny Mac because of his record. When you say the pool community, Mark, as well, as a... Uh, talking to my son today, he lives in Scotland, he lives in Troon, and he said that in, in Scotland there's so many leagues and clubs and the pubs, it's Paul, is like big, big, in, is, is it more bigger in Scotland than it is anywhere else in the country? I, I think it's bigger than Celtic and Rangers. I don't think that. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think, think that. that at all. I don't think but, that. No. But it, it is massive in Scotland, and uh, the amount of good players that come from Scotland, yeah. I mean, we've, we've been quite fortunate, we've already seen Liam Dunster. And Mark saw Boyle. Mark Boyle. And we've got a few more next week up our sleeves, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about. So in Scotland, Paul is like really, really still. It's, yeah, without a shadow. It? It, it is a hotbed. It it's really is. And for, for betting purposely, because as you know, I've been brought up with horses and grand bookmaking and the betting. Bit of, a, bit of an old time and ever at the game. But this is, you know, to me, it's so quick as well, betting on Paul. You know, as you said, you know, you could have a tie, three, three, winner and away, what, you know, own two, favourite or outsider. And I just think it's a great spectacle for the people who want to play at home as well. You know, really well, this, this is like the 2020 of Q Sports, and this format just suits suits it for the for the spectator. It doesn't suit the players, assure me, it does not. But it suits the audience and the betting partners. Everything it suits them. Lovely. Well, that's it. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do then. You know, when we come back at 10 o'clock. We've got the Rolls Royce up here, haven't we? So, uh, anyone want to watch us on Sporty Stuff TV 437? Don't forget, dead 10 o'clock, we'll be on with the Rolls Royce of Paul. See you later.